good to talk with you. Good Just morning. to introduce Simon, I met you, Simon, around about 10 years ago when I started working in supported employment in Bath. The Royal United Hospital in Bath was one of the first sites to become a project search supported internship site in the UK. And I met you when at that time you were the um, matron in the hospital, in a ward in the hospital. And you had a young intern. So I'm going to ask you a few questions and look forward to the answers. Can you tell me, Simon, why you decided to take your first intern all those years ago? So I was approached by um, the project search team um, to say, would I be able and willing to take a project search intern to work within our trauma unit? And at the time we had quite a large trauma unit, so it was 57 beds um, employing just over 100 staff. So a big environment, uh, a fast paced environment. And um, I kind of couldn't find a reason not to. So I was really keen to, if that makes sense, because what I wanted to do was offer an opportunity. Um, I like the sound of Project Search. I thought I could be involved with it. Um, so we were like, right, let's give it a go. Let's give this a try and see how it works for us. Um, I was also conscious that the unit was big. It was busy. And actually, we were a busy unit and we were looking at roles that might release some of that nursing time. So there was also a thinking of what could come from um, hosting this intern. Fantastic. And how did you find the experience of having a young person as an intern? So I found the experience really uh, beneficial and so did the patients and so did the team. Um, and I did have I was nervous to start with thinking, how is this going to work? How is this going to fit in with our normal structure? Are staff going to be um, able to work with the intern, able to spend time with the intern, but also develop the intern so that they have a good experience. Um, and for us, we had a really good experience. So we saw an improvement in our patient experience, our staff experience, um, and it was able for us, our teams, to learn different ways of communicating, interacting, um, and actually for something so simple as um, a work list or a checklist. It didn't have to all be, um, you know, written communication. There was ways that we could do that with pictorial images. Things like that was really, really helpful and made the team learn about lots of different disabilities, but also how we could overcome that and how we could work around different things um, to support the journey. So our experience was really positive. Um, and we were very fortunate with our uh, first intern and we had several interns after that. Some of them worked out much better than others. Some of them weren't the right environment, so we had to look at a different environment, but we also were able to change the roles for our interns and some of our interns had, uh, had a uh, one willingness to be healthcare and work in healthcare and work as a healthcare assistant. So we were able to look at that role, how we could provide that intern for that for that student to actually really work um, differently than maybe so not treating everybody as the same. It was actually what did they want to get out of it? What did they want? to do what was their what was their plan after project search so if i take the instance of our healthcare assistant um the intern was really keen to to be a healthcare assistant and then possibly progress to their nurse training so we changed that internship so that it actually met their needs um so we had a really positive experience mm -hmm. so going back to your first intern what happened when they finished their internship so our first intern was Matt um, and when Matt left we were like oh my gosh it was a huge void um, because he was somebody who'd taken he was so willing and so able but it also we'd seen a real difference in him um, and his confidence and the benefits he was providing to our team not just to our nursing team um, because that he was releasing our nurses time to care so for some of that Matt was doing was um, taking things to pharmacy, delivering the post, uh, return, uh, picking up pieces of equipment from our, from other departments for our patients. He was also helping with meal times. He was talking to some of our patients and spending time with them. Um, he was also supporting some of our patients that needed enhanced observation. So when Matt left, it was like, oh, what are we going to do? Um, and he'd really proved his worth and actually had created a role. We were very fortunate um, with our first intern and actually Matt had created a role that we then realised we couldn't work without. 
and um, we had some really positive feedback from our patients and I can remember saying once that if you're in hospital and you've broken your back so you've got a spinal fracture and the only thing that day is a different newspaper every day Matt was able to provide that he was able to go to the shop he was able to do and that was such a a small thing that had such a big impact on our patients so once Matt left we decided that actually we needed to trial um, this post so we at the time I was able to go and speak to my um, line manager and said right I think I've got some money I've got some money from my healthcare assistant posts could I recruit a patient support assistant so we wrote the job description and got agreements for that trial agreement for that trial and um, yeah the rest is history and now we that has expanded over lots of wards. Um, people saw the benefit of that post and actually the impact that post had. And it does, it releases our nursing time to care and that post has expanded. And I'm aware that the young man, Matt, had to go through the same process as anyone else when he was successful in getting the post. Yeah, so he started off on a six month fixed term contract and there wasn't much interest for that post. Um, it was a new post. It was a fixed term contract, which sometimes you do see less um, applicants for. Um, but after that six months and we were able to prove that role worked, um, he went through a much bigger process because it was it was a permanent post. There's a lot more interest in that post. Um, and actually, there he there was lots of people that were more academically qualified than Matt. But actually, we were looking for somebody who had the skills, the knowledge, and went through a full competitive process and actually excelled. I will. I'm not. You know, I was nervous when Matt went through that process. Oh my God, what if there is somebody better? Um, and we're going through a competitive process. However, Matt shone through that, and I think that was part of the fact he'd already done some of the role he had experience of working in hospitals he had experience of patient care working as part of a team and that shone through at his interview and actually I didn't interview him I wasn't on the panel because I thought it wasn't appropriate for me to be on the panel so it was a fully impartial um, panel of different people that didn't work on the ward. That's fantastic and my understanding is that Matt is still in post? Matt is still in post, yep. Um, the post originally was a band one and now it's a band two patient support assistant and, and Matt currently is, remains in post, yeah. Fantastic. After you started ha having interns and you got to know about supportive internship and project search, you became the lead for project search in the hospital. Can you tell us why you did this and what it entails? Yeah, so my role was providing that. So we have a HR lead. Um, but actually, this was about me providing that clinical leadership and having a clinical person that was a go to for the job coaches, for um, the project search teaching team. It was having an individual that understood project search, was able to be an ambassador for project search and also that supported internship um, and the follow along job coaches and having somebody that every people were able to go to for advice, but also that I could work with the teams, support the teams on other clinical areas if they were having issues or if they were nervous about sharing some good news, working through different ways of working. But also it meant that there was a clear uh, lead for mm. people to come to and also that was and you know I meet monthly at the moment um, and re more regularly if needed but actually we meet monthly and I meet with the job coaches and you know if there are instances that we think are going to prove a challenge we can plan we can kind of get to it before the problem even exists mm -hmm. um, but also it is somebody that's a link to the clinical areas um, and then I also meet every six months with our uh, director of people um, and that's about keeping them up to date but also keeping them appraised of any issues but any concerns but really most of the time we're celebrating success which is great. And what's also been great is you've continued doing this even whilst your career continues to change and you're now director of nursing so you've been yeah. the key person in the internship program for all these years, which yeah. is just great for the program. So thank you. I'm also aware that the RUH now employ over 40 of the young people. What did you do to make this happen in the RUH? So this was about 
sharing our good news, sharing success, sharing new roles, but also working very closely with the clinical areas, but working so as different posts come up, it was ensuring that, you know, they were open, they were available, but we were also able to change some of our processes. And what I mean by that, we weren't rewriting our policies, but we were actually it doesn't have to be an interview that is just questions and answers. We were able to start looking at working interviews. We recorded somebody doing the post, somebody doing the job um, on an iPad, sharing that interview. Um, doing, as I said, doing working interviews, looking at the questions, looking at how we respond and looking at the application forms. Just that whole process of encouraging people to apply for jobs, but also that process of gaining the job. It doesn't have to just be a standard interview, but it was about us then working with the follow along job coaches so that we were able to provide that support. One, to retain our staff, which, and I've said this previously, that's no different than we do with any of our staff um, and treating everybody as individuals and working really hard with them to make sure they get the best out of their post, we get the best out of them, but also in, you know, ensuring that we have really low turnover, which is great our staff have been able to um out with the 40 young people that they're not all in the same post they started with um some of them are some of them decided actually once they've explored a different avenue or seen a different job advertised or a different role i'd like to have a look at that i'd like to go through that and support through that but we've also got people that have started off as a healthcare assistant who well actually they started off as a patient support assistant have become a healthcare assistant um and now have become an emergency department assistant and we've got staff that have worked up to different bands different grades different roles but we've also supported people to you know gain additional training but also really feel part of the IOH team which is wonderful yes earlier you mentioned the follow along job coach and I know the RUH have a job coach who works in the RUH supporting the young employees can you tell me more about this how this works for you yeah so for this this works because it gives the ward area somebody that can support them it's not the um you know you're not being left alone with um maybe sometimes uncharted territory but actually it's about how we can provide that support so we work closely with the job coach but the job coach works really closely with the team and i don't believe we would have had so much have the amount of success that we've had if it wasn't for the fact of the follow-along job coaches um i think the fact that they're able to support the line managers, able to support the, the young person and the employee and actually get to know them, get to know their area of work, get to work around issues. If there are problems or concerns, they were able to work around that and support them. And that's where I link. So I don't replace the line manager, but I can sometimes give some of the oversight. I can support the line manager, but also um, supporting the job coaches. But the job coaches understand hospital life. They understand hospital roles. And that's really helpful. And I think that supports not just us, but it really does support the employee. Mm. Oh, that's really good. And you now have over 40 young people working within the RUH who've done internships. What do these employees, what do you think they bring to the hospital? So I think they bring similar to lots of our team members. So they bring commitment. They bring um, passion they want to work in the health service they you know they've chosen to work in that role um they also bring um they're very much part of the team so they you know for us they they have very low sickness levels they're engaged at work they in enjoy their job a turnover is limited they actually may bring to the team different perspective for some of the team members different ways of working they bring new ideas um, I think the benefit is most of them are friends because they've come through the project search route as well so they bring new ideas from each other because um, they meet outside of work and have, like, still have their friends as well as being part of that team so they do bring new ideas when they're like well we're doing this in one area is it something we could do in another area um, but I think they just bring you know so much to the team um, it's difficult to put it into words really but um, it is I think from from knowing them and working with them and I think it is that real passion for mm. wanting to work but also that real passion for wanting to help people yeah and they also they, they do bring so much learning for the team and 
um, I've joked to one of my previous ones about my ward clerk going to an Avril Lavigne concert that I don't think she ever would have in orthopedics um, because she, actually she'd wanted to go and they'd become so much so with Matt I think Matt took her actually it might not have been Matt but they really worked it's, they're very much part of the team and people want to they make so many new friends don't they yes yes and yes. their independence and all of yes. that seeing that you know yeah. that transition is so good Yes. And I, I also remember one of the young employees was looking to leave home and the job coach together with team managed to get him a place in the nurse's home. Mm -hmm. And it was a perfect first step for him to be leaving home, just the same as other employees yeah. coming to work at the hospital, which yeah. was great. Um, we're now in the midst of COVID, of course. Um, and just wanted to ask you, how have you handled things, especially around safety, um, with COVID becoming such an issue for all of us now? Yeah, um, and we know COVID's brought several challenges for everybody, hasn't it? I think, um, but actually for us, it is about the same as any other member of staff. So we risk assess them um, to ensure that, you know, they are safe to be at work, but also where they're working, which areas they're working. So. Um, some of our staff uh, aren't able to work in the area they originally were working in uh, because of the risk of that area, whether that be high risk, an, a high risk area and then being not able to work there. And for that, we've looked, as we've done with all our employees, to work redeployed to a different area for that period of time, um, but worked really closely with them and with the job coach. Some of the um, things we've had to do differently is with some of our interns coming in that have wanted because obviously their placements were cut short as well at the end the beginning of this year is some of them have wanted to repeat some placements so we've looked at where we can provide that safely but also working with the line managers and doing in our infection control team and doing some of the education in the departments so going through our personal protective equipment going through our new processes in the area that they work so it's very face to face um, obviously at two metres, but very face to face, but actually working with them in their own areas. So this is what you'd be expected to wear. This is how this process is going to work now, because there has been lots of changes. So it's supporting them as we've done with every, other members of staff. But some of the changes we've made is actually, whereas in virtual control would teach them as a group, um, in a classroom based scenario that's not able and actually that's probably not the best because it's different on every ward. So we've taken it to their area with some more one to one sessions and the job coach has been involved in that session. So they're trained at the same level of the employees. So then they need to support them, ask questions. Um, and myself and the job coach have met quite regularly to go over some of the COVID. As you know, there was lots at the beginning. So it was very important that they were kept to breadth of those changes so that they could support the employees and the um, students. Yeah. And my last question is, since COVID, we're aware that across the country, lots of people are losing their jobs. Have any of the young people lost their jobs within the Royal United Hospital? No, none of them have lost any of their jobs. Some of them have been redeployed. Um, I've just seen an email this morning actually to say that one of our employees who was off shielding is able to come back and is going to be coming back to work in our discharge hub um, because of that low risk level um, and they're able to. So they're slightly disappointed they're not able to go back to their original workplace, but they're really excited about coming back to work. Um, but that's not just coming to work. It's about the public transport. It's about lots of things, isn't it? It's, you know, it's yes. that whole process of just even getting to the IUH. <laughs> yes, yes. No, thank you, Simon. That was fantastic to hear, especially because I'd worked with some of the young people some years ago to hear that they're still in work. So thank you and all your colleagues for all you're doing in making it continue happening. Thank you.